When palpating the cervical spine, the patient is positioned in prone, keeping slight cervical flexion and retraction if possible to improve access to the spinous processes. If we find the occipital protuberance, the large raised area at the back of the skull, we then move centrally downwards towards the cervical vertebrae. Initially, we will drop into a small dip where C1 lies. This is because the first cervical vertebrae does not have a spinous process. The first prominence that we will get to will therefore be the spinous process of C2. The spines of C3 to C5 are closely packed together and C3 is usually hidden underneath C2, making it difficult to count down the levels accurately. C6 and C7 usually appear more prominently and to differentiate we can ask the patient to extend their neck, noting that the spine of C6 will move forwards and therefore disappear under the spine of C7, whereas C7 will remain stationary. With regards to the transverse processes, these are usually quite tender and difficult to differentiate, partly due to being covered by large muscles. With the patient in supine, we can feel the joints open up by passively rotating the patient's neck and feeling the gap between each level. The thoracic spines are longer and angulate downwards and therefore are easier to palpate. There are 12 vertebrae and so depending on the level you are looking to identify, it may be easier to count down from the cervical spine or upwards from the lumbar spine. Due to the length and angulation of the spines of the thoracic vertebrae, the tip of the spinous process is in line with the transverse process of the vertebrae below, meaning that the spinous process you are palpating will not be in line with the vertebrae from which it arises. When palpating the lumbar vertebrae, it can be useful to place a pillow underneath the stomach to reduce extension, in the same way that we would flex or retract the cervical spine. The lumbar spinous processes are large and project directly backwards, so are usually relatively easy to identify. By identifying the iliac crest and coming straight across, we should get to L4 or the space between L4 and L5, depending on the patient. We can confirm this by moving downwards and finding L5, and then underneath is the broader and flatter sacrum, just below the dimples for the posterior superior iliac spine. We can then move upwards through the lumbar vertebrae quite easily and through the lower thoracic vertebrae if needed.